You know, if you wanted to make a blockbuster Hollywood movie, this would be the story to use. Truth is stranger than fiction. This is why the best movies are based on actual events. Let me ask you folks a question. Do you know what all the great mysteries of the world have in common? Anyone? It's Antarctica. Everything that, listen, this continent has it all, baby. It's home to penguins, UFOs, tiny humans, giants, dinosaurs, flash frozen aliens, not to mention the fallen angels that are locked up there. There are giant sea monsters, pyramids, castles, the city of Atlantis, secret bases, weather modification control devices, Nazis, volcanoes. It has the best view of the southern sky and telescopes if you want to watch Nibiru come in. And apparently, this place is also the edge of the earth. And let's not forget that at the South Pole, there might be a second entrance into the hollow earth. I'm telling you folks, this place is happening. So I want to tell you a story about a group of people who went to Antarctica a long time ago to build a stronghold to harbor advanced technology, technology to take over the world, and the Admiral sent to stop them. Nineteen eighteen, the end of the First World War, also known as the War to End All Wars. The nation of Germany was at the brink of total collapse. Many lives were lost. Almost 20% of the male population were killed, leaving the rest of the population in a state of starvation. Tensions rose, and the conflict between left and right wing extremists became violent. There was no law and order. They fought each other, destroyed each other, resulting in the deaths of thousands across the country. A new government had to be established and fast. So they drafted a new constitution for a new government that would be led by president or chancellor and it would include a parliament or Reichstag. The chancellor would be elected by popular vote to serve a seven year term. They would be given total control of the military and elections, as well as the powers of executive order, enabling them to suspend civil rights and operate without the consent of the parliament. An organization formed in the middle of the country's economic demise going from about 65 German marks to $1 in 1920 to over 4 trillion German marks to $1 in 1923. Now this changed the German culture because in spite of the chaos, all people, German Jews, gays, lesbians, all people of all lifestyles and religions felt liberated. They became more artistic. They became expressionist. This time in German history pushed out more creative people to the surface, big thinkers, artists, builders, scientists. Now in 1926, the US commander of the Rhode Island State Militia, Richard E. Byrd, and chief aviation pilot Floyd Bennett organized an expedition unlike any other, a flight to the North Pole. The flight from Svalbard, Norway to the Pole covered a distance of 1,335 nautical miles. Byrd became a national hero, and him and Bennett were both awarded the Medal of Honor. 
Bird would attempt to broaden his popularity by announcing his attempt to make the first non-stop flight across the Atlantic in 1927. Now Floyd Bennett was injured in a test flight, so he was replaced by Bernd Balchin as Bird's chief pilot. They, along with crew members Bert Acosta and George Noville, would go forward with the non-stop transatlantic flight from Roosevelt Field in New York to France. However, due to extreme weather, they could not land at their destination in Paris. So they had to divert back to the coast, which ended up with them crash landing near the beaches of Normandy. Fortunately, no one was killed. Bird and his crew were once again branded as heroes. And Bird and Noville, being officers of the military, were awarded the Flying Cross in 1928. Robert Byrd's lust for living on the wild side and crazed expeditions led him to launch the two-year adventure into the Antarctic to explore the South Pole, resulting in Byrd's promotion to Rear Admiral by an act of Congress in 1929. After his second season of exploration in 1930, Byrd was honored with the gold medal of the American Geographical Society and was recognized as a pioneer American explorer worldwide. Unfortunately, upon returning home, Admiral Byrd would face one of the most devastating economic catastrophes in American history, the Great Depression. This caused a chain reaction because now of the pressure coming from the US Every other country involved wanted their money back for the cost of the war. This put tremendous pressure on Germany to pay up. And so they elected Chancellor Heinrich Brüning, who would make the stupid, idiotic, moronic and perhaps manipulated decision to cut spending on government programs that assist those in need. And since the German government was barely able to hold it together, they soon became overpowered by left and right extremist organizations, one of them being the Nazi party, who began to gain popularity and earn the trust of other extremist groups. Soon the Nazi party would have enough popularity and people sitting in the parliament to elect a new leader, a leader who would take advantage of the new German constitution, virtually granting him dictatorship over the nation. And in 1933, Germany would hail their new chancellor, Adolf Hitler, giving birth to the Third Reich. Nineteen thirty-nine, another global war broke out. It was the Axis powers, Germany, Italy, and Japan, against Ally forces, France, Great Britain the United States, the Soviet Union, and China. German forces became desperate, and their scientists rushed to create new weapons that would give them the edge they needed to win the war. Victor Schauberger, an Austrian forest caretaker, created models of what is commonly known today as a flying saucer. The idea was to create a vehicle that could hover and travel high speeds, as well as fly undetected by radar. Schauberger met with Hitler and was soon inducted into the SS, where he would continue his work. Schauberger collaborated with a few other scientists and engineers to develop several designs for this in three different locations in Germany. They were successful at all three locations. Now these Nazi forces were pumping out new technology left and right and they were very close to using their new flying saucer technology. However, Hitler's plan to release this technology failed as the war was brought to an abrupt end. The technology they developed would then fall into the hands of the Soviet Union and the United States. 1945, the end of the Second World War and the beginning of the New World. By this time, 
Byrd had completed two more expeditions to Antarctica and led several missions to the Pacific during the war, also acting as a confidential advisor for the president. It seemed as though there was no challenge that Byrd would not face, but nothing could prepare him for his greatest mission in 1946, Operation High Jump. Now this was supposed to be a science expedition funded by the U.S. Navy, but at a press conference, Admiral Byrd himself said, my expedition is military in nature. And he wasn't joking. Byrd led an Armada Task Force 68, along with Admiral Richard H. Cruzen, with an aircraft carrier, the Philippine Sea, two seaplane carriers, the Pine Island and Curitic, two destroyers, the Brownson and Henderson, two escort ships or supply ships, Yankee and Merrick, two fueling ships or tankers, Canister and Capacan, and a submarine, the Senate, and well over 4,000 staff. Admiral Byrd was ready for war. For two months, Task Force 68 surveyed the land of Queen Maud Land in Antarctica, where it was suspected that Nazi forces may have been able to build a hidden facility that harbored advanced technology, much like the technology they and the Soviet Union had retrieved from Germany after the war. Now, why would they think that? Because they knew about the German Nazi U-boat convoys to and from Antarctica during the war. Even before the war, they knew the Germans spent many resources on expeditions to Antarctica. And in 1939, two planes, the Passat and Boreas, took off from the Schwabenland. A ship named after the region Swabia in Bavaria, Germany. They began to patrol Queen Maud land for several weeks until finally claiming territory the size of Germany, called New Swabia. Later, the Grand Admiral of Hitler's fleet, Karl Dönitz, quoted, My submariners have found a true paradise on Earth. The German submarine fleet is proud. At the other end of the world, we've made an impregnable citadel for our Fuhrer. A citadel, meaning a fortress that commands a city. So for Admirals Byrd and Cruzen, this was a seek and destroy mission. Hundreds of photographs were taken during their survey. New mountains were discovered. Everything was going according to plan. And then, in 1947, they were met with opposition. Byrd reported fighter jets. One pilot, John Cyruson, describes flying saucers. They flew vertically out of the water in a fury, slipping between the masts of the ships with such speed that the airflow pertubed and dislodged the radio antenna. I didn't have time to blink an eye. The two Corsair from the Casablanca were slain by some kind of mystery ray, shot from the nose section of the flying saucers. They then dived into the water near the ships. Suddenly I saw the destroyer, Murdoch, which was about 120 feet away. The flames flashed and it began to sink. On March of 1947, the El Mercurio, a newspaper of Santiago, Chile, released a headline. On board the Mount Olympus on the high seas. An article that quoted Admiral Byrd in an interview with Lee Van Atta. It is a better reality that in case of a new war, the continental United States would be attacked by flying objects which could fly from pole to pole at incredible speeds. Now that was quite a story. Now wasn't it folks? I hope I was successful at forming the context around this topic to give a very brief but more complete picture of what happened back then which may also help you to see what is happening today the same thing 
We live in a reboot of an old movie, folks. Remember, the question events of Operation High Jump occurred the same year as what? People went UFO crazy, remember? Sighting after sighting. The government was bombarded by concerned citizens. Now, they denied having any involvement with those sightings and the government went as far as to suggest that maybe the Russians were behind it. After all, there was a Cold War going on. A race for new technology and weaponry. A very intense time. And wouldn't you know it, this happened to be the same year as the Roswell UFO crash. Ladies and gentlemen, I could go on and on with the connections, and so far, I have mentioned nothing about aliens. In fact, Hitler and his followers were deep into the occult. Keep in mind, these guys were desperate during the war. Look at what they did to human beings. These guys came up in a nation at a time of chaos and death, creating a breed of these types of madmen. They didn't care where they got their ideas from, and just like the story of the fallen angels that once corrupted man giving them cool ideas on advanced technologies, these same dark forces seem to have done the same thing with those German scientists. Maybe this had something to do with Hitler and his crew being so drawn to Antarctica. Was something calling them there? Has the world government of today recently discovered Base 211 after all these years? If so, what's in it? And why are people so drawn to the icy continent today? All I know is the devil is up to his old tricks again. The events that led to the Second World War are happening again. It is a different time, and so the circumstances are different. I have a question. After hearing that story, what part of it did you not believe? The truth is right in front of us. My hope is that more of us will be enabled to see it.